Yes, I'd like to speak to Immoral Timothy, please. Yes, I can hold. <laughs> Here you are, filthy. No, you like it hot and steaming. The tea, I mean. <laughs> May I say what a tremendous pleasure it is to see you. Yes, indeed, he do. How are you? I'm not lending you any money, Eddie, and that's <laughs> final. Hello, yes, Immoral Timothy. Yeah, Ralph Filthy here. Now, look, look, I've told you before, I don't deal in drugs. Yeah, yeah, well, that's why I sold you three ounces of scouring powder. <laughs> yes, well, look at it this way, you'll have the cleanest nose in Clapham. <laughs> A fiver, then. Now, look, immoral Timothy, there's no need to call in huge Simon. I was wondering if you'd accept use of my body in full paint. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm in lovely condition. I only got my new teeth last Thursday. <laughs> Filthy. Really, daughter, you do make me tired with your heartless scrounging. Got a fag, by the way. <laughs> I don't know, what sort of a minder are you? Whenever Richie needs you, you're never there. And when he gets beaten up, you join in. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps you on. Filthy. <laughs> Show business is a cruel and lonely world. When you're up, <laughs> everyone wants to be your friend. And when you're down, <laughs> nobody wants to know. Richard sticks by me because he knows amidst all the doubt and hypocrisy, he can count on my feelings. <laughs> he knows I hate him. <laughs> oh, I'm stretched on the rock of my own genius. <laughs> and what is wrong with the boy, Richie? Well, he's trying to write a novel, but he keeps on coming up against the same huge lack of talent. <laughs> a novel? He's no more a novelist than Geoffrey Archer. <laughs> and I knew Geoffrey when he was still going to adult literacy class. <laughs> no, no, Richie should stick to what he's good at. Well, unfortunately, you can't make much cash off lying on the sofa and playing off occasionally. <laughs> oh, why must there be such pain, such pain? Look, filthy, about this cash, I'm serious. Richie hasn't brought home anything in the last three months. Not since he did that wonderful voiceover for Durex. <laughs> I really thought that might turn into a really big contract, you know. For a fantastic finish, with no annoying drips, <laughs> slap your brush into Durex. <laughs> Due luck, said he. It was a pain <laughs> Well, whatever. That was three months ago. Now I'm broke again. I'm broke. We're all broke. God, what a country. I'm a sick man. Does the government care? No. Nah. My medicine has gone up to eight quid a bottle. Eight quid. And then you have to buy the tonic. <laughs> oh, a blank and empty page staring at me, taunting me. Eddie, how the hell have you plug these bloody things in? <laughs> have you just spent the last four hours trying to plug the typewriter in? What that bloody stupid look at this? Look, look. A plug. What? Two pins at the top, one pin at the bottom. <laughs> The socket has got two pins at the bottom and one pin at the top. It beggars belief. It completely defies comprehension. Oh, God, how depressing. It's the wrong way up, daughter. The two pins go in the two holes. Oh, I see. So I suppose I'm supposed to go back in there and turn the wall upside down, am I? <laughs> they haven't read anything then. No. No, no. No. Not even a dirty pamph. <laughs> I've joined the ranks of the other suffering artists. Keats, he suffered. Shelley, she suffered. <laughs> Michael Barrymore, we all suffered. <laughs> Van Gogh, cut his ear off for a smile from his lady. His ear for a smile. Blimey. Lucky he didn't fancy a quick wriggle. <laughs> Suffering's got nothing to do with it, Richie. You have failed through complete lack of talent. Au contraire, lesser mortal. <laughs> Despairing of modern technology, I allowed my genius to flow for a simple old-fashioned medium. I dug out the old ballpoint. Oh, uh. Please, Eddie, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> so you have written a novel, then? Better. I have mastered the highest and most complex art form known to man. I have perfected a game show formula. <laughs> a copy has already been dispatched by horny-handed messenger to the nice entertainment department of the BBC, where Jumbo Whiffy, the greatest entertainment supremo of modern times, will flip his lid. What? You mean, you just sent it to them? 
Just like that. No security, no copyright, no nothing. Not even a stamp. Ha! <laughs> Auntie can pay the postage. But daughter, this is show business suicide. If your idea is any good, which I'll admit is a million to one chance, the beeb are bound to pinch it. It happens all the time. Panorama, that was Arthur Mullard's idea originally. <laughs> it, I remember we did lunch. He said to me, Ralph, he said, I've got this magic new idea for a programme of political analysis and current affairs with me as frontman and Thora Heard on links. <laughs> Dimbleby's at the next table playing footsie with Val Singleton. <laughs> And Arthur got stitched. <sighs> Poor old Arthur. You better take me with you, Richard. You're going to need a tough, experienced, hard-headed negotiator. Oh. <laughs> I'm not getting the half slew broken down pornographer. Jumbo and I are artists. We don't want agents spoiling the atmos. Come, Eddie. We go alone. <laughs> The idea uh, comes from that uh, clapped-out, useless, uh, talentless, has-been Richie Rich. You never heard of him. Yeah, well, you missed nothing. Look, but the main problem is, he wants to present it. <laughs> <laughs> well, dear old scout, it's a while since I sat here. Mr. Whiffy, won't be long, I'm sure, Mr. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's when old Stupot picked me to the post for that crackerjack job. <laughs> crackerjack. <laughs> Uh, dear old Stewpot, <laughs> where is he now? A couple of years handing out crackerjack pencils to the snot noses. Crackerjack. <laughs> and then whoops a daisy, oblivion. <laughs> Whereas me, me, shoo, <laughs> that's me, meteoric. Best thing that ever happened to me, losing crackerjack to a lesser man. <laughs> crackerjack. Look at him, he stop shouting crackerjack. This is for BBC, not a place of entertainment. <laughs> did I you a well-known voice? Richie Rich, you old bugger. <laughs> Put it there. Put your pipe on over there, you old bugger. <laughs> oh, all right then, you old git. <laughs> so, how are you, you old bastard? Oh, pretty good, pretty good, you old foreskin. <laughs> This is my minder, Edward Cutflap. Oh, terrific, terrific. Well, look, go get yourself in there and we'll have a drink, you pair of old tarts. <laughs> Don't mind if we do, you wrapped and faced bucket of sex <laughs> uh, Three coffees, please, darling love. Look, if he really is your darling love, I suggest you get your eyes tested while he's still free on the NHS. <laughs> You've met Jill, I take it. I don't know what I'd do without her. Uh, terrific pair of uh, eyes, eh? <laughs> Yeah, fantastic knockers as well, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, well, sit you down, sit you down, take a few, or as the old sergeant used to say to me, pop your bot on the spot with you or I'll shove a bayonet up it. <laughs> uh, three more coffees, please, darling. <laughs> right then, Richo. Judge, how much are you going to pay me to present my great new show? Oh, let me take a look at you, you old queen. You look great. Yeah, but what about his idea, Jums? <laughs> Hold it, cowboy, where's the fire? Let's dance around this for a while, knock our heads together and see if you can end up on my lap, eh? <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> uh, hang on, Richie, we're not homosexuals, are we? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Now, look, Richie, don't think I'm saying your idea's not sexy, but can I afford to go to bed with it? Or am I looking for a completely different kind of lover, eh? But I've got to run it up the old flagpole, see if the cat wants to lick it. <laughs> uh, yes, but are you going to give me the job? Uh, bum face. <laughs> uh, three more copies, please. Darling. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, let me put it this way. When I first came into this office, there was a fat old drunk sat behind that desk mumbling platitudes. And it was me. <laughs> and I'm still there. You see the way I'm thinking, Richard? No! Yes, yes, yes we do, Dad. Yes, yes. But are you going to do my new show? Come on, let's buy you a drink, me old mate. I've asked Iggy Guffer, our uh, finance and budget troubleshooter, to join us for a swift one. Or ten, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
can. We try not to get pissed or something. <laughs> series layout initiative. What are we talking there? Uh, all the pistols or cruise missiles? Well, uh, oh, I say, damn, sir. <laughs> Should be allowed, girl like that, get a married man like me into trouble. Hey, get me to a cold shower. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm certainly yeah. glad I'm wearing my trousers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. I've read the outline treatment and I like what I see. No question there. Fantastic! Right, I want Terry Scott's dressing room. No, no, get Selena Scott's. Yeah, I want Selena Scott's dressing room and don't bother tidying up the undies. <laughs> hang on, Richie, hang on. Look, I like playing myself. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it five nights a week, prime time on Channel 1. Ah, now, run your idea past Eggy here and see if he wants to stick his hand up your blouse. John, don't believe me. I respect you for holding back. This guy, Eggy. This man. This man, Eggy. This man. Jumbo with you, who I knew, who I knew when he was only a quarter of a ton. This man, <laughs> the man, Eggie, the man who brought Keith Harrison Orville into television centre. It's the nearest thing that I've got to family. Oh, sod off, you old queen. Oh, oh yours, you ratty, <laughs> dribbling zit. Yeah, screw you, you complacent, misogynistic bum splat. <laughs> Kind of showbiz friendship these new boys don't have. <laughs> Richard, Richard, run your idea by me, Sasha. Get this. You're going to flip your flipping head. All star golfing secrets. I like it. Good telly. <sighs> it's a hot one. I'll feel exactly the same way I felt when I first got a sniff of Bernard Manning. Eggy, what say you? It's big. Put this out against play your cards right and blow Brucey off the box. Let's go, contract. I shouldn't really be signing without my agent, Filthy Ralph. Oh, get on with it. Maybe they'll get another round it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Thank God someone's still got their feet on the ground. Fair. <laughs> when do we start? You don't start at all. We only wanted the idea, which you've just signed over to us for two pints of lager, <laughs> which you've had. We want Davro for the presenter. Jumbo, we do not make gags about talentless creeps. He does good impressions. Look at Copycat. Aggie, no one has ever recognised a single impression of Copycat, except when they say something like, Hello, my name's Betty from Crossroads, in an Irish accent. We rate Davro very highly indeed. He's the next Tarby. And you're a talentless moron. So we're going to pinch your idea, stick Davro in the lead, and you can bugger off to a short has been for give us a clue. <laughs> Oh, God. Still alive. <laughs> there was something I meant to do before I nodded off. Oh, yeah, put my fag out. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I hate doing that. Going to sleep with a fag still on. Did you get the job or did they cheat you? Yes and no. 
you did get the job and they didn't cheat you. Sorry, no and yes. <laughs> they nicked my idea, those BBC bastards. I'll show them I'll make myself into a TV megastar. Bigger than Judith Chalmers. <laughs> That's absolutely bloody enormous. Some though, Whippy will beg me to work for him. The only way you'll ever get back on telly, Richie, is robbing a sweet shop and getting on police fire. <laughs> Actually, that's not too bad an idea, Eddie. Filthy, get me an advert. Get me an advert, please, Filthy. A good ad always sorts things out. Yeah, that's true. Look at Leslie Crowder. Yeah, or rather not. <laughs> Actually, if it wasn't bad, was it? Get that one down, Eddie. Good gag. I feel like throwing it up. <laughs> we all thought Leslie was finished after my good woman. Yeah, but then... He did the Marge ads, and before you know it, it's... Come on down and make a complete tit of yourself! <laughs> what are we talking about? You couldn't do an ad, Richie. Not a personality one anyway. You haven't got a personality. All right, all right. Don't rub it in. No one's going to buy a toilet roll because you've got it in your mouth. <laughs> Nobody. All right, all right. Selena Scott! Am I forever to be surrounded by poltoons? <laughs> You don't necessarily need to be famous to get on adverts anyway, you just got to have a good idea. Like, for example, someone decided to sell instant noodles on the grounds that they taste nice. It's so outrageous, it's brilliant. What about that dog you're supposed to wipe your bottom with? Yeah. <laughs> if you are referring to the gorgeous little Amphrax pup, Edward, it's got the toilet roll in its mouth. The idea is that the paper's so lovely and soft it's like wiping your bottom with a puppy. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, perhaps what they're saying is the paper's so bad you might as well feed it to the dog. <laughs> Except they've got an elephant in the new ads. Where does that fit in? Ah, I shouldn't think it would fit in. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're saying feed the paper to the dog. Yeah, and wipe your bottom with the elephant. It's <laughs> a truly surreal concept. That's the kind of thinking we need now. Come on. Let's think of an advert for me. The first idea sesh is on. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Yes? What, me? Uh, oh, well. Uh, well, well. I've always thought that cornflakes look a bit like people. <laughs> And after briefly dipping his toe in the waters of reason, the man with no brain happily retreats to frolic on Insanity Beach. <laughs> Pay for that, you bastard. <laughs> <sighs> Hi, Richie Beach here. God bless. Look after Mum. Ah, ah, ah! Sunday, it's still available. What can I do for you, Squire? News? What news? You want someone for an ad? <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yes, that's very interesting. Thank you so much. Not work, then. No, no, my dad's dying. <laughs> we really need some bloody cash. I know, and I need to get on telly. What I need is a bloody good advert. <laughs> now, listen, your dad's dying. That's Trey Boner News, daughter. Well, I must say, Filthy, I find you're out a trifle, cow. <laughs> it's a dog movie. We can make money out of these. No, it's no good for the trot of my grand. They just don't buy bodies anymore. <laughs> come in, come in, come in. Listen. This is the plot. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> right, get your pad, sexy. You're in the office now. Hi, Tomo, baby, you old prostitute! <laughs> you look like a million dollars in used notes. Ha ha ha! Just joshing. Uh, let's do business, you old bugger, you! What can I do for you? Aha! Uh -huh. It's more a question what he can do for you, you dirty old gusset face! Well, <laughs> you yeah, think I'm on it. <laughs> Tom, hey, I'm your big new advertising initiative. Mr. Rich, overweight, drunk and old has-beens are hardly considered a major market force. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Nice guy, Tomo. I like your style, you hatchet-faced old easy lay, you. <laughs> We're gonna get on great. <laughs> I think she fancies us both. Let's get frisky. Get out of my office or I'll have you sprayed. Ah, ha, ha, touche. I love a chick with a sense of humor. Listen, my dad's dying. Yes. Mr. Rich, this is head office, not a retail outlet. <laughs> if you wish to purchase a wreath 
Freddy here will be only too pleased to supply you with a list of shops. Miss Tompkins, this is my plan. My dad's dying, right? Tough for him, but life must go on. Now, I reckon <laughs> we can get a few celebs to the funeral, you know, probably up to Saint and Greavesy level. <laughs> then we'll make the Nash news, and then we're laughing. I'm sorry I don't follow. Oh, for God's sake, you stupid cow! <laughs> That's when we do the ad! A celeb wearing legit mourning, flogging flowers at his dad's funeral! It's colossal! How are you going to get the celebrities to the funeral? I mean, it isn't even you that's died. It's your old dad. Mm, 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 mm. Well, you're not going to get Tarby. Oh, <laughs> but my dear woman, some of these has-beens haven't been on TV in years. They're desperate men. All we have to do is make sure there's a camera at the funeral. And that way, all the sad little minor celebs are bound to turn out trying to get on Southeast at six, looking sad and concerned and available for work. <laughs> This, Mr. Rich. Please, call me sexy. <laughs> this, Mr. Sexy, is fantastic. I am prepared to offer you a three-year contract worth half a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum TV exposure, posters the lot. From now on, you are the bloody Flora bloke. Fantastic! <laughs> Shall we shake or shag? <laughs> contract after the funeral. In the meantime, if any of your other relatives start to look peaky, let me know immediately. Oh, wonderful. Good day to you. Get the door, sexy. Fantastic. <laughs> Duffy! You old failed experiment in open brain surgery. Your plan worked brilliantly. I've just handed the biggest advertising contract in history. We're rich. Well, I'm, I'm rich. more shoplifting. Limitless lager. Oh, it'll be too, too pleasant. I'll buy a theatre, write a play, buy a newspaper, write myself a good review. <laughs> My head removed and replaced with two pub optics. One scotch and one gin. That way I could sort of press myself against the ceiling and get a double straight down the neck without all that bother of having to raise your arm and swallow. <laughs> Let's drive safely, look after Bob Richie Rich here someday, it's still available. Bastards! <laughs> My bloody dad's getting better! <laughs> well, it was nice to be rich for 30 sex. They were. Sounds a bit rude. Sounds a bit like sex. Well, it sounds exactly like sex. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> Filthy, I can't return to Paul. Well, you don't have to, do you? How do you mean? Well, you could always kill him. <laughs> <laughs> kill my own father to get on an advert. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, because... Because... Well, there aren't really any reasons why not, are there? <laughs> no pics, no pics, please respect my life to some privacy. We'll have a few autographs later. Richie, look, I'm not complaining or anything. But a few moments ago, we had just decided to kill your father. And now, we have come down to a public house where, presumably, we are about to get completely whammoed. Again. I don't follow the logic. But, Eddie, surely you don't expect me to kill him myself? Kill my own father? From whose loins I sprang? <laughs> Why, I am for fruit of his very seed. How can I murder my own flesh and blood, Eddie? Richie Rich, I never knew you capable of such touching sentiments. No, 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 it's nothing to do with sentiment. I'm talking about the papers. What happens if the papers find out I've killed my father? <laughs> Might be a bit of a scandal. Well, I'm not saying we couldn't sit on it, but give a dog a bad name. Like Tiddles. That's right. <laughs> Somebody's bound to stick. That's why we've come down here. You see, we've got to get somebody else to kill him for us. Oh. I'll get the drinks in, and you rustle up a couple of low-looking fellows with a murderous glint in their eye. You know the sort, likely-looking lads who'd as soon handle a blackjack as eat their dinner. Right. I'll have a bit of a rustle around then, OK? <laughs> I don't wish to appear defeatist or anything, but after some considerable rustling, there appear to be no low fellows to report. Eddie. This is an East End pub. There's bound to be. Haven't you read your dickens? No. We're in Bill Sykes' country now. <laughs> Thieves, murderers and prostitutes. Come on, I'll check out the landlord. 
if he's a prostitute, he's going to starve to death. <laughs> ah, my host, and a very good day to you too indeed, landlord. Uh, perhaps you'd be so goodly kind as to draw us a couple of fulsome frothing tankards of your best ale, and perhaps serve us a smidgen of the fine old English fare, which is so boldly promised on the attractive sign outside your door. Yeah, and besides all that, we'll have two pints of lager and a couple of pasties, please. Is he winding me up? <laughs> it's the oldest trick in the book. So when no one suspects my darker intent, I'm passing myself off as a harmless idiot. Well, I shouldn't put an undue strain on your acting ability. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. I really, really knew you were going to say something like that. I really, 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 really knew that you were going to say something like that. <laughs> Just as long as you realise that I knew all the time that you were going to say something like that. Well, that was in the script, wasn't it? <laughs> well, thank you very much. What are you having, Richie? Uh, a small port of lemon, please. <laughs> now then, my lord, I'm a well-heeled top from up west, and I'm looking for a couple of low fellows who don't mind doing a bit of dirty work, so long as there's a sovereign in it for them. Well, you're not going to get much for a quid, mate. The old bloke in the corner might give you a kiss for that, I suppose. There'd be more if you wanted to put his teeth in. Not that sort of dirty work. As far as sexual gratification is concerned, I'm quite capable of doing that on my own, thank you very much. <laughs> Listen, what I require, landlord, is two stout artisans of such degraded morals that they'll do bloody murder for the price of a belly full of mother's ruin. You mean you want someone to risk life imprisonment for a fiver? Well, hang on, no one said anything about a fiver. Blimey, I only want him killed, not staffed and manted. You seem to be under the impression that this is some kind of job centre for the criminal fraternity. Well, come on, mate. I know you working-class costermongers. Once you have drunk your meths and beaten your wives, there's nothing left to do except sex for dog, isn't there? You're always on for a dear mischief, aren't you? That's it. <laughs> All right, Frank. Morning, Rocky. Take a look at those two. Pretty hard, aren't they? Oh, I wouldn't want to meet them in an alley on a dark night. If they had a chainsaw and they were gouging my guts out with it, they <laughs> splitting my head open with a blunt machete and spilling my brains out all over the pavement. Yes, Ned, if your brains were spilled all over the pavement, I hardly think the local council street cleansing department will be overtaxed. Do you? <laughs> Shut up. Restrain your imbecility whilst I ingratiate myself with these two gutter snaps. Two parts of wallet, please, Frank. Uh, I'll get these, lads. Make them halves. <laughs> I want someone taken out. Permanently. You mean killed? You have a keen brain. What is this, a cabaret? What's the matter, kid? You're scared? <laughs> just plenty tough, thank you. But when the bottom line comes, you just can't hack it. Plenty of swagger and two parts of wallet, please, Frank. <laughs> when there's man's work to be done, it's... Off home to mummy. Yeah. Come on. I just bought you two lily-livered lettuce leaves a half a bittery to think I deserve something in return. Yeah. Blimey, I only want my dad killed. Maybe they're scared. What are you? Queer. <laughs> Maybe they're puffs. Just a couple of poncy old queens. Just two mincing old woofters. Whoops, watch your bums, lads. Backs to the wall. Get them a handbag. Put on your bike clips, Eddie, or they'll be up your trouser leg. Bloody fairies. That's what you are, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is a gay pub. <laughs> Come back until you've liberated your sexual politics, or you'll get a murder, all right? How dare he? I'm completely liberated. I work in the theatre. Some of my best friends are trouser bandits. <laughs> I my daughter, that's all. Yeah, but you haven't got a daughter, have you? What's more, you're very unlikely to have one, because the chances of any woman letting you within a billion miles of her action are completely non-existent. You're a cruel, spiteful little viper, aren't you, Eddie? Christian virtue is a foreign language. Kindness and good fellowship are closed books, aren't they? <sighs> Come on, let's go and kill my dad. <laughs> it is imperative that we are brilliantly efficient. Right. On our past record, that seems a trifle unlikely. Firstly, and above all, we must leave no fingerprints. Right. 
Did you bring the gloves? Yes, indeedy. <laughs> These are other gloves. Yes. <laughs> you should be needing gloves because things might get a bit hot. Oh. <laughs> well, you should say what you bloody mean. Well, yeah. it was obvious what I meant. You can't expect me to circumnavigate every torturous twist of the bottomless pit you choose to call a brain. Give for a gag. What do you call a coal mine that can't go to the toilet properly? Who knows? A bottomless pit. <laughs> Brilliant and great. That gag will be all over Britain next week. So is herpes, but I don't think nice people want it on the television sets. <laughs> That's right. Which do you want? The little Mr. Men shaped ones? <laughs> That's the shape ones. For fox shape. No, 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 for Mr. Men. No, no, foxes. No, no. Oh, God, I don't know. One of each, one of each. Nice choice. Eddie, I think that you should wear a mask. Why? Do you think I'm going to get recognised? No, nope, I just don't like looking at your face. <laughs> Never mind that jibe, but it's a witty one, and that was brilliant. Oh, thanks, Eddie. Right, now we've got to buy the poison. Right. <laughs> shh, shh. I cannot stress sufficiently the care and stealth of the essence here. They must give nothing away. Softly, softly, catchy, monkey. Let's go. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'd like some poison to kill my dad, please. Good afternoon. I'd like some poison to kill my rat, please. Oh, oh, sorry, sir. I've only got six packets, I'm afraid. Well, how strong is it? Oh, quite strong, yeah. Quite? I mean, well, I mean, look, if I wanted to kill one, say, very big rat, <laughs> how much would I need? How big a rat? Well, uh, uh, Eddie, how big would you say my dad was? Oh, about uh, six foot, about eleven stone. Yeah, he's a big man. Uh, uh, with, with claws uh, and, uh, and a long tail. Oh, yeah, and, and teeth. 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 Where's my teeth? Where's, Where's my, my teeth? teeth? Yeah, so six packets would kill an elephant. Four pound, please. <laughs> Do you hear that, Richie? He thinks we're trying to kill an elephant. We're <laughs> baffling him at every turn. <laughs> There you are, shopkeeper. Now then, my name's Angela Ribbon, I'm Dutch and I live in Antwerp. Come on, baby. I mean, you're your husband. Where? Where? Right, let's pop the poison at pot and poison pop! Yeah. People may say I'm cruel and heartless, but I honestly have no choice. Cash is involved. Richie, there's a letter for you. No, that's a bad mail now, filthy. I'm poisoning my dad. I think you should read it, Richie. It's germane to the issue. Oh, give it here. <clears throat> you are a bastard. Look, could you stop talking about me and get on with the letter, please? <laughs> he is doing. It's from his mother. Ah, dear sweet silver-haired mummy. <laughs> you are a bastard. <laughs> Such a Joshua. <laughs> Dear Richie, you're old enough to know now, but I never knew your father, who was just a one-off bang to me. <laughs> the man you call Dad is just my present sex slave, and I've told the papes for a fiver. A few more home truths. We never liked you, and your name is not Richie, but Gertrude. <laughs> I've been closed next year's birthday cake, so I need never see you again. Love, Mum. P.S. Piss off. <laughs> well, that's it, then. We can't poison Pop because we don't know who he is. Better eat the cake! <laughs> you know what, Gertrude? I could get to like your mum. <laughs>